Ever wonder how some guitarists bring so much emotion through their guitars? Well, with this one chord, I'm gonna show you how you can bring a crowd to silence. This one very special chord creates a feeling of tension and intrigue and guaranteed to turn some heads when you play it. And it has a name that you would think is completely made up, but it's not. It's called the minor major seventh chord, add nine. It's the chord I played at the very end of that little guitar bit in the beginning of the video that goes like this. So we're gonna break down this chord and we're not gonna dive too deep into the theory, but the reason why it's called a minor major seventh is because it's essentially a minor triad with a major seventh note in, you know, built into it, right? So you don't really have to know what any of that means in order to play this chord. But if you play this chord properly, you can totally tell somebody, hey, I'm totally about to play a minor major seventh add nine chord and they're gonna be like, what, that sounds made up. And you're gonna be like, check this out. And guess what? They're gonna be silent. So we're starting off with the root note, which is A, and we gotta play it with our thumb in order to pull off the chord in its full voicing here. So with our thumb, we're gonna be bringing it over oop, and fretting the fifth fret on the low E string there. Doesn't require a lot of, uh, you don't have to really press on it, right? It's not quite the same amount of uh, force like if you were using any of these four fingers, with your thumb, you can just kind of like rest it over, let it kind of hang over, and then just kind of grip the neck a little bit with your thumb, and that's enough to really play the note. Then what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna skip the A string, the open A string. So what I try to do is I try to mute it with the flesh of the tip of my thumb. All right, so I can keep that muted because I'm gonna have to play the rest of the strings here. Then with our second finger, we're gonna play the sixth fret of the D string. That particular note is our major seventh note. All right, so it definitely creates a very clashy kind of vibe when, when paired with the root note. And then we're gonna have our first finger is gonna be barring the fifth fret on the G and the B string. So we're playing a minor third and a fifth here. So we have our root, our major seventh, minor third, our fifth, and then we're gonna add a nine, which with our pinky is gonna be the seventh fret of the uh, uh, high E string. So this, this chord kind of employs all of our fingers. All of our fingers except the ring finger, of course. The ring finger can kind of sit this one out. But with using our thumb, we're using four playing fingers like what we normally would do. So when you play through it, you know, just kind of, you know, even if you don't understand what root, major, seventh, minor, third, fifth, ninth, whatever that, if you don't understand what any of that means, like I said, you don't have to in order to play this chord. But with those notes paired together, it does create an A minor, major, seventh, add nine chord. So you can call it that when you play it. And you're absolutely correct. You don't even have to understand it. Now, I love using this chord as a way of ending something, whether it's a phrase or a song even. It just creates such a tense and unresolved ending, but it, it's just, it feels like you're a private eye in an old black and white movie. So like what I did in the beginning of the video is I played a simple, you know, A minor pentatonic, like, you know, and then I just ended it with that A minor major seven add nine chord. So what signifies this chord as an A minor, you know, is the root note. Basically the note that you're using your thumb to play with this chord shape signifies, you know, the key that it's in, right? So right there, it's A minor, major seven, add nine. But this, just like uh, your average bar chord is a movable shape because every note is fretted. We're not relying on any open strings. So we can actually move this shape in different parts of the fretboard. So for example, if I wanted to move it up to C, right? Just know that the eighth fret on the low E string, that's C, right? So that note right there is what I'm gonna play with my thumb. I'm still gonna mute the open A string, right? And I'll use my thumb to do that. And then I have the, the major seventh played with my middle finger, then barring here the uh, uh, eighth fret of the G and B strings, and then playing that added ninth, right? Which is the 10th fret of the high E. And now it's a C minor major seven add nine. 
So the only thing that's changed is the first letter in the chord, and that's what signifies what key the chord is in. And this type of chord is so effective, you don't really have to do a lot with it. And like I said, since I use it as an ending, all I really do is just gently arpeggiate it, you know? I'll just play one note at a time really slow, like this. And just let it ride. Now, if you want to experiment with moving this chord shape along the fretboard, you can use, do it in the same way that you would playing the pentatonic scale in different keys, right? So if, let's say back to the key of C, right? If I wanted to play the C minor pentatonic scale and licks within there, I can just play a couple licks and then just end it on the C minor major seven add nine chord. And it would sound something like this. If you're newly introduced to the concept of soloing and you'd like to learn how to solo in any key you want so you can end that solo with that crazy chord, I got something I think you'll like. A free worksheet on how to instantly solo in any key. This has helped thousands of guitar players learn how to transpose to any musical key you can think of on the fretboard in the shortest amount of time possible. So click here to claim your copy of the worksheet or check the link in the description box.